Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling a Zimbule. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to continue to take a look at what's new in ZimCat01. So here's the Zim site at zimjs.com. We'll press on the cat, and here are the new things. We're going to look at the generator in the next bubbling. This bubbling, we're looking at connectors. In the last bubbling, well, just uh, the last before, we looked at Flipper, and then in the last bubbling, we looked at ZimSocket. And we move into, this is Zim00, so we did that in the last series of bubblings about a month or two ago. So, Zim connectors, let's have a look. All right, we've got three different uses of connectors here. One is to connect the dots, and this is called a linear, where you have to do them. You can make it so that they go in order. For instance, I can't select anything from here. These ones have already been done, so I can't select those. But if this is the next one, I can. And I can't go to here. Oh, and I can't go to there. Oh, but I can go to here. Yay! So that's called linear, and there's a few different settings with linear. For instance, you could end linear there, or you can choose to wrap. Wrapping is the default, and we're, we've chosen to wrap. There's an event, that, a complete event that you get when, uh, when it's complete, linear is complete, and you can do what you want at that point. So here is more free form, where we're taking uh, lines... <laughs> Those are kind of sucky lines, aren't they? Uh, let's see, how do I delete? I click and hold and it should delete. Or I could have deleted this one and it would have deleted all of the ones after. Let's try this again. Let's make a hierarchy. Woohoo! So this one is snapping. It's snapping to a certain grid. Boop, like that. And uh, as mentioned, there's a click and hold to delete. Um, I think you can also double click it to select it and then hit the delete key if you have a delete key and, and that works. Uh, the double clicking allows you to select multiple nodes and move them. So for instance, let's do that. Well, if I double click, that selects those guys and then I can move them along or delete them at that point. Uh, so great, anyway, this is a, the, more of a freeform node making so that you can uh, create um, hierarchies uh, from it. <laughs> and you can choose how wide your grid is or not even to be on a grid. And there's also, as you can see here, different line types. So these ones are curved, do you see that? So curved, and, and these are connector nodes which allow us to connect from one thing to another, like so. Now, it is a first version of these things. We're running into, I mean, look, a connector just went over another box, but it was pretty tricky darn code in the first place. So it's a good first step, <laughs> we'll call it that. We might be looking into a an elbow, like an elbow, so that we could, say, connect from here and go up and connect to the one that's at the bottom there. You see how we we can't really do it, it doesn't, it doesn't let you. But maybe if we had an elbow, then we could. But for now, you just put one at the top and connect it that way. <laughs> there you are. There's also little arrows on the other side. Uh, you, you can make them go on both sides or on no sides. These guys could have arrows or curves, etc. We made some adjustments to Zim line. So the fact that this can curve isn't really to do with the connector class or the connectors, it's plural connectors class, but rather it's been an update to Zim line to be able to handle a curve. Or this one's called, oh, I can't remember, corner or something, corner, I think. And you can do dashed lines and various uh, different types of lines there too. And in this case, we can just pull them off like so, I think that's probably good. Uh, you can't you can't pull it off on on this end, but if you, you can on that end, yeah. What do you think? Not too bad, huh? For a first go, as mentioned. So let's go in and take a look at some code on how that was done. Hopefully, you're having a good time. I mean, connectors are fun. I love nodes. I have a philosophy of nodism, so one would presume that I'd. 
uh, have some nodes around. And this is kind of stepping towards maybe node-based programming, but it allows you guys out there to make apps like that. Uh, we don't necessarily want to turn Zim into a node-based programming language, but you could then use Zim to create node-based apps I like that. All right, so we're in Zimcat 01. Uh, let's select that one. There we go, Zimcat 01. If we come on down, we have a cat that is uh, the cathead.png. No, we didn't even load that. Oh, <laughs> no, but we still loaded it. <laughs> but we don't have to uh, these days. It could be lazy loaded in there, and that would load just fine even if we didn't bring them in like this. But um, still probably recommended, certainly if you have multiple assets, probably to bring them in as an array up top here. That was new to Zimcat, the fact that we don't actually have to preload. So we've got this cat, great. And then we've made a blob. Now what we did is to get those points going around it, we made a blob and used the blob to create the points. Neat, because blobs can, blobs can be interactive. So there we are, we, we made a blob. We said, I would want 10 points. We're going to have a control point or control type of none. So that would mean that it wouldn't get the traditional Bezier's that would turn the blob into this round circle, but rather all the lines would end up being straight lines with just points that you can drag around, no Bezier handles. So that's what that would give us. And that's perfect for what we were creating there. So we took that sort of, well, however many, it's not an octagon, octagon plus two, a decagon or decagon, decagon. And uh, we made it so that when we tapped the cat, the picture of the cat, that we recorded the points. And by passing in the true there, it pops up the points. I'm not sure, why don't we get rid of that blob, get rid of the connectors. Oh, well, that'll certainly get rid of them. Numbers. Container cat connectors dot on complete. We got a few things that we gotta undo here. Or turn off and just show you how we can do that. That was here, I believe. So because this is in the example, you're welcome to try this out in your opening browser. All right, so that's what it makes us. And what we can do, we have to think about it a little bit. This is the starting point. So the top of the blob is right here. So if we want the first point to be there, we should probably drag it to here like that. Uh, this is the next point. We pull it into here. These things are kind of getting in the way, aren't they? Pull that one into there, move that one up to here or whatever, bring it down to here. This one could go here. It's pretty ugly. <laughs> so I sort of pre-estimated roughly that we needed 10 points and uh, I got it wrong because I think we have to move this one up to here, uh, this one down into here, this one over to here, and that one up to there, this one into here, and this one into something like that. Anyway, so that was that was the arrangement. And when you oh crap, when you click on the cat, hopefully it's still click. That doesn't click. The cat's in behind there. When you click on the cat, uh, oopsie, boo boos. Uh, there they are. So that's the points right there, and you can copy it. Cool, huh? And that's what we did. We copied those points into this right here. So now we would have a blob with those points all pasted in. And here's what it looked like. One of these things. Refresh. I guess we didn't add it. So we didn't even bother adding this blob to the stage. There's the end of it down there. Dot add to. Now at this point, I think you want to add to. Don't center it. Just add to because we've recorded where those points are. And well, I would have thought that, that that was what we would have done. Uh, but there it is. Maybe we did have to do some moving around afterwards. There's the cat blob that, that we had recorded. So that was a nice easy way to record all that stuff. In the, in the end, we don't want to we don't want to add the blob because what we're going to do is use the blob as the points. Sorry. Semicolon. All that for a little semicolon there. 
in the end, we want to use this blob as the points for the connectors. Now I'm going to show you connectors that have points. I think I do. Yeah, connectors with points here. Points. Well, one point. So that's how you would normally do it. This is a connector at 0, 0, comma, and then here's a connector at 100, 0, uh, etc. So that would be uh, the, the points are an array of arrays, basically with an x and a y value. In this case, for our hierarchy, we only had one point, And for the one down here, we had um, the points distributed around objects. So uh, none of those really had a traditional set of points. Well, I suppose a one point line. Here, we're passing in the blobs for the points. So uh, we've set it up so that the connectors can receive a blob or a squiggle. And wherever the points are in those blobs and squiggles, it will make points for your connectors. Cool. And then this one's linear true and linear order true. So it has to be done in order. So if you don't do them in order, let's have a, have a look and see what this does. Did we bring in the other things here? No, we didn't. Let's bring the completions. OK, how are you doing out there? Sometimes I have to remember I'm not just talking to myself. There are people there, friendly people. <laughs> uh, right, well, something got messed up. That probably means an error. F12. Cat is, n cat is not defined. Oh, right. We need the picture of the cat. Okay, we don't need the setting up of the blob. We do need the blob so that we've got the points here, but we didn't add this blob. I think we're good now. Okay, now what do we do? Uh, we made it so they don't have to go in order. See, we can pull from there. And that would be fine too. This is, I mean, that part has to go in order, but we can we can join the lines out of order. <laughs> they just need to be, all the same. well, that's too bad. I could have ended on a different one, but here we'll go one to 10. See, still works. So that would be fine. Maybe for kids, you don't even give them numbers. As a matter of fact, this is what the, uh, the connectors look like underneath here. That's the real connectors. These things, one, two, three, four, five, those are fake connectors. All I've done is put uh, round circles where the blob points are, and in those round circles, I put numbers. So numbered circles. Tried them by putting them next to it, but I think this turned out pretty well for doing numbers on the dots, and it seems to, you know, like that kind of feels natural. I didn't want to put the numbers in the round circles here because these circles move about. So actually when I pick up number seven here, this is seven coming along with me and we leave a circle in behind. So you can't really count on the circle being what, <laughs> what you wanted left behind sort of thing because I'm actually pulling the circle with me now. So by overlaying circles on top, we get around that issue. And let's see how we did that, shall we? So, oh, that's the linear order true. And then if we don't want linear, here's what it would look like without linear. So we'll just, uh, there, there's us making the circles. We'll get to that in just a second. But let's see what the uh, taking off the linear looks like. So now I can do this. Not only that, but I can make more. <laughs> <laughs> and more. So this is the default format of the connectors is it just looks like this where you can move around a set of connectors and I'm going to click and hold on this one and that deletes this can since it deleted this one and all its children there's no need for a connector to go to nothing so that got rid of the connector. Um, okay, so that's, oh, by the way, uh, you see how we're constantly pulling from there? If you don't want to pull, you double click it and then, then you can move it. That's an option. You can choose to let people do that. You can also specify the number of these things to add. And it looks like this is uh, unlimited, all right, where maybe other ones are limited to one or you could limit it to three or what have you. Okay, so that would have been the more natural state of the connectors, but we're going to keep those as lines. Or, sorry, as they are always connected with lines, but we're going to make it linear. 
All right, here is how we handled the numbers. We made a new container. We located up the cat. You know, it may be the reason that we did that. Where is this cat? There's the cat. We located at the picture. We moved it. Since this connector is itself a container and we're locating it at the cat, um, if we make another container and locate it at the cat, then these numbers will match up, or like the, the positioning of them are going to match up, and we're going to be able to locate it at these points. So that's what we've done. We've gone through the connectors points array. This is the connectors has a points array. Each time we get a point, we make a new circle. We locate it at that point. So this is the x of it, and here's the y at it. Inside of nums, which is our container for the nums. We're turning them, we don't want it um, selectable, and by turning its mouse off, that means we can select what's underneath it. If we didn't do this, we wouldn't be able to select through the circle to the stuff underneath. Do you want to see that not work? So we turn off the no mouse there, and we come in here. Well, you see, I can't, that circle is on top of the dot or of the uh, node of the connector and I can't select it. So we've, we've set, basically you have to set the mouse children and the mouse enabled of this off. If you just set the mouse enabled, it might have children which have mouse enabled. So that's why you would have to then say mouse children false, mouse enabled false. And so that's hard to tell people to do. And what we did is we wrapped that up at Zim, we wrapped that up into a, a, a mouse and a no mouse. So if you just say no mouse and it's chainable as well, where'd it go? Right there. So if you just say no mouse, that means turn off the, the children and turn off the uh, mouse enabled, please. So two properties that we would have to set otherwise. And if we want to turn those back on at any time, we would say dot mouse and that turns them back on. And then here we are making a label and we're using I. You see how in our loop, in our Zim loop, we loop through the array, we get the element of the array and the index number. We're using that index number to create our numbers. Uh, this starts at zero, so we've added one to it there. And then these things, uh, for aligning things in the center of something, you v-align and align, and you center reg. So v-align, align, center reg, and that will make your text go into the middle of something else, such as our dot, whatever we center reg that on. Anyway, that's not really about connectors, so we should stop and, and just stay on point here. <laughs> on point, <laughs> when our connectors are complete, that's great. We got a complete event. Then we're fading out the numbers. So their numbers go to zero and we fade up the cat. The cat was at a lower alpha. Fade up the cat. We're uh, animating the connectors darker as well or to half. I'm not sure. Maybe the connectors were invisible at, at one point. And we're caching. Oh, that that's the lines, right? So we, I don't know what our lines are at in the first place. Maybe we just drop, they, they're probably at one, then I, I don't see anything to do with lines. So the lines were at one in the connectors and we're animating them down to 0.5. Otherwise they'd just be a bit bright for us. And to do that, we cache them. That that just makes it a bit more efficient. If we didn't animate that, let's have a look. Oh, that means I have to go in here and connect the dots. That's why I did it. I just want to connect the dots again. Oh yeah. Uh, hopefully that's all right. We, we, we tested this on mobile. Works fine on mobile, but these dots were a little bit small for the fingers sometimes. So for kids, we then added an expand and we just made the default expand zero, which means it makes a box around them and the whole box around them is, is selectable. That's why no, I don't see it there actually. Maybe it's only on mobile. But um, you can uh, set the expand to be something like 10 or 20 or whatever you want. And then you'll get a, a 10 pixels or 20 pixels around as well to make these things really easy to pick up. Of course, if things are close together like this, you got to watch it. You don't want to say expand 50 and then click on this right here and it's expanded to 5 by 50 or something like that. And here we go. So what's going to happen? Oh. That's the normal uh, alpha of one for the, the whole connectors. And we just thought that clashed a bit with the cat. 
So that's why we animated back the connectors. You don't have to cache it, but anytime you're animating a bunch of lines and uh, vectors like that, sometimes caching them helps. You can also, uh, as, as things are animating, you really don't notice the cache, but you might notice it after. So when, when, that, uh, when those get animated down, they may not look quite as crisp as usual. So you can, when you're finished the animation, uh, do a call and then uncache the connect. So connectors.uncache in the call, and then they're back to um, nice, tight um, vector quality. See, when they're just sitting there, it's fine having vectors. But when you're animating, every single animation frame has to redraw those vectors. So it can make your animation, uh, sometimes on mobile, a little bit uh, slower, or they, you only see parts of the animation. So anytime you can, during an animation, cache your vectors animate and then if you want to you can uncache your vectors to get nice crisp vectors again. The last one here, is it the last one? Oh it's not the last one, it's the hierarchy. Where is the last one? Oh yeah, the last one's down here. So this is the hierarchy one. We've just made a single point. That's a little bit awkward for a single point. I do agree. The default is not a single point and we may or may not adjust that one day who knows here's what the default looks like the default is four points uh, which allow you to you know, play with them a little bit more if you so desire oh check this out as i drop it on there it doesn't let me do it if i drop it next to it it allows me weird huh that's because this one is drop type off so uh the other one the other the one where we had to connect the lines is a drop type on by default linear whenever we're trying to do something in a line has a drop type of uh, on which means you've got to drop it on another node by default if it's not linear it's just free form even say new connectors by default that is drop type any which allows you to drop it on a node or off a node but if we were wanting to make a hierarchy hierarchies believe it or not uh, if you have one hierarchy, which we don't now, we've got potentially four hierarchies, but when you've got one hierarchy, hierarchies are never supposed to connect their dots. So if we go back to just one point here, but anyway, to finish that, to finish that point, by default you get four points in a box. Uh, I don't know if that's the best for a connector, but that's what we've done. So that means to turn it into one point is a little tricky looking, isn't it? <laughs> it's an array of one thing, you know? So, okay, an array of one array. Good as that look like? Anyway, but that's how you would get one point, and we check it out here. There's the one point. So when you've got a hierarchy like this, you're not supposed to pick this up and actually drop it on something else like that. So we don't let you do it. Um, by saying it only you can only make a hierarchy by dropping off of the things and so that's fine now it's also got root lock true can you imagine if we take the root lock away there then uh, that looks fine but remember remember how we had this uh, arrangement here where we could double click and move things about well, now we can double click the root and move the whole hierarchy about. So that's what root lock uh, none um, was doing for us. That's a rather sloppy one, isn't it? Let's move that. Um, anyway, that's what root lock uh, true, sorry, root lock true was saying, please lock that. Uh, root lock false is it won't lock. There's our snapping sizes. So you can imagine how that will do it. And then so I guess we've looked at everything inside of there. Oh, our line. Our line is type corner. Why don't we change it to type curve? So And also line orientation vertical, which means we're assuming that the bend is going to happen in a vertical direction. So when we build a hierarchy, we build down more. And as we go off to the left, then we get a bend. So maybe we can take a, a peek at that refresh here and now we've got a curved hierarchy oh this is like so pleasing isn't it is that nice just makes you want to make hierarchies all day now we didn't 
st we don't start off with hierarchy lines. So we're letting people build hierarchies, but there is no way to actually say, please start with this hierarchy. So that will happen most likely in an upcoming version of connectors. We have a Zim hierarchy, which specifies hierarchical data that's being used in the Zim list for an accordion, which expands out to nested, nested accordion list. So most likely it won't be too bad to say, all right, here's some hierarchy data. Please make this node of that hierarchy data. Shouldn't be that bad. But what you're going to find is this kind of thing uses uh, in a hierarchy uses up a lot of space, to tell you the truth. A radial mind map kind of thing where it all goes out radially. I mean, that might be the next step. But then we're, we're building a, a mind map tool. It's sort of your your task to, to make a mind map tool, not Zim's task necessarily. So we had to draw the line somewhere. But anyway, we, we will probably make it in a, in a future one where we could give it a hierarchy data and it would build this initial structure for us. The thing is, you're going to want to put data there, aren't you? And I mean, okay, then what do we build to put data there? You could do what we did here, where we've got labels positioned at these locations. So then you could position your own label at these locations, but you're going to find out that this label is too wide to fit in there. And it's like, it's, it's, that stuff starts to get really tricky to do that automatically. So we have not done that automatically. <laughs> you're you're going to have to uh, let the people build it themselves and see that something that is too long doesn't fit there. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, where were we getting at? These are the curvy lines. What else did we want to see about that? Oh, yes. And note that the bend, as we're coming down, it's got two sticks going down. So let's take a longer look at that. This is vertical. So this is vertical, and this is vertical, and one horizontal. So this is the, the vertical version of it. Let's swap it up. To, and once again, this is in the line now. It's not in, the, in the, the connectors themselves, but in the line class that we've made these additions. Horizontal. So here's what a horizontal one looks like. So I go to make my my line going down, you see what I mean? Now it's got two horizontals and it's really set up to do a hierarchy going off to the side. Like so, a sideways hierarchy and not made to do a downwards hierarchy. It's like, oh. So these are hierarchies that are going out to the side. There's a I can't remember. I think there's a both way, a curve that is both ways. But I believe that we don't do that with the connectors. And I think you can, well, let's try it. Maybe I, I could be wrong. Let's try both. I don't know how both or any. It's any or both. Let's see what happens. That's down. And that's off to the side. Yeah. So that's a sideways hierarchy. Um, that works as well. Now we got hierarchies kind of going in both directions, don't we? So it must it must be able to tell. And we, we can't move I can't move the root at the moment. So <laughs> that one's a little lost. Uh oh Yeah, I might have no way <laughs> to move wraps. There is a, a boundary. So you can set a boundary for your nodes. So oh there it is right there. I think it's just the edge of it. Oh, I can't get it. Anyway, there is a boundary that you can put in here as well. All right, so undoing. Boop, ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. Corner and vertical. And let's go down and see the last one. So for the last one, we've got a tile of the icon. So this is specifying the Zim icon. And we're positioning that tile in the bottom right hand corner and making the all of it draggable. Now, if we wanted to drag all of it, uh, well, e e so each thing in the tile will be draggable. If we wanted all, we would say all colon true. And at that point, uh, we come back here and refresh. Now, when I pick this up, all of it drags. Well, that wasn't quite what we were intending. Hey, okay. look, that got shifted off because of the all dragging. Huh? Oh, bug, closing, 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 close. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's interesting. The container itself gets dragged rather than the individual item. So these circles in the container were were in the wrong place, or they hadn't been updated. They probably would update the next time we try and use them or something. But now that we're dragging these individually like this, what we've done is we've made these things follow the individual items. And then we can uh, drag to it like so. Yeah, let's see what else we got here. So that's the idea. We've got this uh, tiling of those things. And then for the points of the connector right here, if you specify for, you see how these are uh, normally for points, it's, it's the X and the Y. Well, if you specify an object, then it assumes instead of an X, if you specify an object, then it assumes that you're wanting to put points on that object. And the, this array right here is um, what kind of points to put around I think the top of it, what kind of points to put around the right-hand side, the bottom of it, and the left-hand side. Now, is that how it goes? No, I think it's, well, let's go take a look at the dot, shall we? I don't remember the exact, and, and th these are a little bit tricky. Zero means none. Three means put three. So uh, I, I suppose we could figure it out. There's five and five, for instance. Well, let's go five and uh, two. Okay, so we save that and open a browser. Refresh this browser guy. There's five, five on the one side here and two on the bottom. So five on the right, two on the bottom. Five on the right, two on the bottom. So this is top, right, no, uh, <laughs> left or right. I don't know. I can't, I can't remember. It was five on the right, two on the bottom. What could this be? This is the right, and this is the bottom. So what's missing? Right. This is the top. Right. But then why is that the left and the bottom? <laughs> okay. Well, how about this? Let's put one there and see what the left hand side is. It must be out. I'm thinking HTML border. So one on the left. So we start on the left, we got start on the left. This is left and right, left and right, top and bottom. So is that right? Left and right, top and bottom. Zero on the top, is that what we've got there? Yeah, zero on the top. Left and right, top and bottom. That's how we set that one up. And zero means none, but watch what, uh, let's do a bunch of zeros. Boop, boop. Boom, but turn this one into a one. And we'll just do a test. This should be one on the left. Just a single connector on the left. Oh. Okay, how about minus one? What does that give us? Save this. Oh, minus one gives us the corners. What does minus two give us? The top corner. What does minus three give us? I suppose what I should have done, the bottom corner. And that's it. So there's no way to actually specify a corner and the middle. Maybe what I should have done is minus four would be what, both corners and one extra. And kind of go like positive in the negative. <laughs> So if you do 10 of them, it would mean both corners plus eight in between. Anyway, didn't do that. Uh, might have done it, but it just we just gave it some thought and said, you know, who really needs to do both corners and this the, the sides? And we couldn't really think of a use case that required that. So uh, we just left it how it is. But you see that we did we did throw a few extra things in there to allow maybe uh, somebody connecting via the corner. We don't really think that people will want to connect corners. It, it just, I, I think that's more rare than connecting from the middle of something. So, but then we thought, well, I wonder if they do want to just do one with, with corners, you know, so that you can connect the corners of something for some reason. So we threw in the corners, but most of the time, I think you'll just use these positives to do our edges. All right, let's undo that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What was it? I guess that would have been it. Yeah. Drag. Great. 
Anything of interest in this one? Our node is a new circle. We Oh, you can specify the node. So we've made this node clear and clear. So in other words, these things are invisible. Otherwise, we could go red. Let's have a look and see what the red. So this is customizing the node. You know, probably not. What do you guys think? Is that, is that how you want it to look? So there's the roll colors on them. Uh, and we got some reds and this is the roll like when you roll over the item you also get the roll color that's optional so you can choose to do that or not faint maybe uh, how about um, we could go RGBA like that and go uh, 0 comma 0 maybe white well 0 is easier 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma uh, point 1 that's uh, an alpha of point 1 Oh, we didn't have to do that. I think we could have just done the alpha right on, on that. But there you go. You can see the like, faint ones in there. Maybe, but still probably not. Huh? So I suppose we could have made them clear by default when as soon as you're collecting objects to, to go around. But that starts getting a bit finicky. Various ro ro uh, node roll colors, node roll border colors. There's the line. We've um, customized the line. You've got things like dashed as well, colon true. Dash now, by the way, since Zimcat has a whole bunch of settings that you can do for dashed, you can pass in arrays of uh, proportions of dashed on and dashed offs. So you can get different different um, types of, of dashed lines as well. But there's uh, your dashed connector, dashed line connector. Very nice. And only one connection at a time, as opposed to two connections at a time or more. So this would allow us to, to pull two or more connections uh, from from there or sorry not two or more that's it so now as I, I try and do that it doesn't let me make another one until I do that okay and we have no connection here I, I don't remember how we did it like there's some issues when you start trying to connect oh that's another one so rather than elbow you could can come out from here, want to go down and connect into there. We haven't, haven't got that um, happening yet. So, I mean, it's a little sloppy <laughs> trying to do that. Okay, well, on that fine grand note, stick that one off. Whoop, there we go. That fine, fine grand note, that is the connectors for Zim. Zim bubbling video here, um, and uh, we hope you've enjoyed them as much as I've enjoyed playing with these things. <laughs> I can't find my my bubbling thing. Oh, there it is! Zim bubbling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna bubble all the way to bed. Is it nap time? Whew. Okay, I am Doctor Abstract, and come on and join us at zimjs.com/slack. And you can ask us any questions about these things as you go and try and make your your mind map making tool. Oh, good luck with that. I, I tell you, it was something else. Um, this just started off as a, oh, let's connect these things together. And it became one of the more complicated things that we've ever coded, I think, these uh, nodes. Very interesting. Love doing it. Ciao.